What's this? A letter for me. Welcome to another episode of Remember the Great Sports Through the Mail Thursdays. Today I'm going to share with you three recent returns that I got back in the mail. And you saw from the intro that we're talking New York Yankees players. So if you're a Yankees fan, you're going to love this. If you hate the Yankees, you're probably not going to love this. So the first one is a return from Florida. And it is former New York Yankees young phenom Sam Militello. On one, two, three, and four. And if you collected cards in the early 1990s, uh, the Yankees had a crop of young talent that were supposed to be, you know, the next generation of stars for the Yankees. Sam Militello was one of those. Of course, Brian Taylor was one of those. And, of course, Kevin Moss was one of those. So if you collected baseball cards in the early 90s, you know all three of those names, and you probably, at one time or another, had their rookie cards in your collection, one of those three guys. So here are a couple early rookie cards of Sam Militello and a minor league card of his as well. So let me tell you about Sam and his career in baseball. Sam, a Tampa native, attended high school in Tampa, Florida, and then later went to the University of Tampa, also in Tampa, Florida, where he was selected in the sixth round of the 1990 draft by the New York Yankees. Sam was immediately assigned to the Yankees minor league affiliate, which is right there, and he posted an 8-2 record with a 1.22 ERA in 13 games his first year in the minor leagues. The following year, his promotion to high A to double A, he posted an even better record going 14-4 with a 1.57 ERA. So now you're starting to realize why this kid was such a big deal coming up through the Yankee system. Well, in 1992... He would be tested at AAA, and he would respond posting a 12-2 record in 22 games for the Yankees' AAA affiliate. On August 9, 1992, Sam Militello would make his Major League debut for the Yankees. He would finish out the year starting in nine games for the Yankees in 1992, posting a three-win and three-loss record, so a 500 record. Well, unfortunately, the wheels kind of fell off the next year. Sam dealt with some control issues and also had some issues with an injury, and that derailed his entire 1993 season. He just had 10 games on the mound in 1993, 3 for the Yankees and 7 for the AAA affiliate. The following year in 1994, during the strike-shortened season, his arm was not coming back to where it used to be. For the Yankees AAA affiliate, he posted a 0-3 record with a 31-91 ERA. Yes, I said that right. 31-91 ERA and just four starts for the Yankees AAA affiliate that year. He gave up 13 runs and three and two-thirds innings pitched. Obviously being shut down after the 1994 season due to strike and due to his injury, the Yankees decided to let him go. Sam would sign with the Florida Marlins and try to make a comeback in their single-A affiliate, but in just four games in 1995, he had to shut it down again. The Yankees would give him another shot to redeem himself in 1996 and would have placed him in their single-A affiliate but he would appear in just three games that year in single A. At 26 years old, Sam Militello's career was finished in baseball as a player. After his time as a player his, it, that was cut short, he spent some time in the Cleveland Indians organization as a, as a pitching coach and then returned to his alma mater, the University of Tampa, to become a coach there. In 2001. As far as I can tell, Sam is still involved with the University of Tampa, and um, he was probably one of the most phenomenal 
athletes, you know, that the Yankees drafted out of Tampa. Very happy to add Sam to the collection. Never gotten him before, so we'll move on to the next one now. All right, so this next one is postmarked from Michigan, and it is former New York Yankee hurler slash Oakland A hurler, Greg Cataret or Greg Cataray. I've always pronounced it Cataray. I think the T is silent. However, I could be incorrect, so if anybody wants to correct me below, please do. I don't know if you pronounce the T or not. I didn't, but maybe it's Cataret or Cataray. So let me tell you about Greg and his career in baseball. Greg, a Michigan native, attended high school in Stanton, Michigan, and later would play college baseball at Grand Valley State University in Allendale, Michigan. In 1983, he was selected by the Oakland A's in the 11th round of the draft. Immediately, he was signed to the A's single-A affiliate where he posted a 7-3 record in 12 games in 1983. In 1984, he would be moved up a level and post a 13-8 record in 26 games. The following year in 85, he struggled a bit as he spent time in single-A and double-A, posting just a 6-win and 16-loss record that year. Despite his struggles, he would be promoted to double-A and triple-A the following year and converted to a relief pitcher. The 6'3 lefty would post a 6-4 and four record and a 3-0-4 ERA in 31 games that year in 1987 between two levels and eventually getting his call to the majors on July 5, 1987. With his time in Oakland, he would post a 6-2 and two record in 29 games that year in 1987. The following year, 1988, he would be part of the Oakland A's Relief Corps, appearing in 58 games, posting a 2.89 ERA and a 5-2 win-loss record. Coming off a World Series appearance in 88, he would again be in the uh, A's bullpen, where he would appear in 26 games for the A's that year, posting a 2.28 ERA. But on J June 21st, 1989, he would be packaged along with Elise Polonia and Eric Plunk for future Hall of Famer Ricky Henderson. So Greg was traded for Ricky Henderson, which is a pretty big deal. So Greg would then uh, finish out the year with the Yankees that year, appearing in 20 games for them that season. And in 1990, he would be used out of the bullpen 54 times, posting a 5-4 and four record. The following year, in 1991, he would appear in 68 games for the Yankees in 1991, posting an 8 and 6 record with a 3.62 ERA. In 1992, he would come back to Yankee Stadium and appear in 46 games for the Yankees, starting 11, then posting a 4 and 8 record. After the conclusion of the 92 season, he would uh, be sold to the Cincinnati Reds from the New York Yankees. He would spend just half the season with the Reds before they released him on July 26, 1993. Greg would then sign on July 30th with the Kansas City Royals and finish out the 1993 season with the Royals. He would then uh, be released from his contract after the 93 season and then would sign with the Toronto Blue Jays for the 1994 season. Greg would appear in 21 games for the Blue Jays that year, and on June 9th, they would release him from his contract, and he would sign with the Detroit Tigers, where he would finish out the year with the Tigers. After the 1994 season concluded, he would then sign with a homecoming with the Oakland A's. He would not spend very long with the A's organization, as they released him from his contract just a couple of weeks after he signed it. He would then latch on with the St. Louis Cardinals and would spend a month in their minor league system, not playing in the majors. And then, after being released from the Cardinals, he would sign on with the San Diego Padres, where he would finish out the year in 1995 with the Padres. After the season ended, he would then sign as a free agent with the Pittsburgh Pirates, and he would start the season in 1996 with the Pirates organization, and they would release him on May 2nd of 1996. Greg would then move to the Cleveland Indians where he would then finish out the season for the Cleveland Indians organization playing in their AAA affiliate that season. The following year in 1997 he would return to the Indians organization playing in their minor league system however they would release him 
and he would then sign with the Anaheim Angels. He would split time between the Angels and the Indians minor league affiliate that year in 97, however would get a call back to the major leagues appearing in 15 games for the Angels that year, posting a 3.29 ERA. Optimistically, uh, Greg went into the season the following year uh, with the Anaheim, Anaheim Angels at the major league level. However, he did appear in a few games in AAA at the age of 36, but spent most of the season appearing in 39 games that year for the Angels until he was claimed off of waivers by the Texas Rangers on August 26, 1998. So here was Greg again packing his bags, going to the Texas Rangers organization, where he appeared in 11 games for the Rangers to finish out the season in 1998. The Rangers let him go after the end of the season and Greg returned to Cleveland to sign a minor league deal with the Indians and after appearing in 10 games with the Indians in 1999, he hung up the cleats as a player and retired from baseball at the age of 37. After his playing career ended, he coached baseball at Simpson University and spent one year as manager of the Summer Horizon League in Redding, California. He also managed in the Golden Baseball League of the Chico Outlaws. After 2009, he left the Outlaws and he became an announcer for Comcast Sports and for the Oakland A's as a studio analyst. After that stint, he spent time as a minor league pitching coach for the Traverse City Beach Bums in the Independent League. He then returned to Simpson University through 2018. And then, most recently, he was a pitching coach for the Lake Erie Crushers, also in the Frontier League, or the Independent League, which is in the Cleveland area, or Ohio area. So, Greg has been around a long time. Uh, he was, you know, uh, packed his bags. He became a, a traveler, a journeyman, whatever you want to call that. And I'm very happy to add Greg's autograph to the collection. Always nice to add somebody I've never gotten before. You know, he was, a, he was a good pitcher, you know, for many years, you know, both with the A's and the Yankees. So we'll move on to the next one. All right, so to round out the final New York Yankee in this Yankees video, this gentleman played numerous years for the Yankees as well as the Padres in his career. And this is Dennis Rasmussen, who also played for the Reds for a season as well. So let me tell you about Dennis Rasmussen and his career in baseball. Standing at opposing six foot seven, the left-handed pitching Rasmussen actually played his high school baseball in California, also in Idaho, and finally Denver. He was selected by the Pirates in the 18th round out of his Denver high school. However, he chose not to sign because he wanted to play college basketball. Creighton University gave Rasmussen the opportunity to play for the Creighton Blue Jays and play on the college baseball team as well. The California Angels selected Rasmussen out of Creighton University with the 17th overall selection in the 1980 baseball draft. He signed with the Angels and made his debut with the Salinas Angels of the California League. In 1981, he pitched for the Holyoke Millers of the Class AA Eastern League. He set a team record with 16 strikeouts on August 18th of that year. In 1981, he pitched for the Spokane Indians, a Coast Triple A affiliate, for the Angels that year, where he posted an 11 and 8 record. After the 1982 season concluded uh, with his second stint in Triple A, the Angels sent Rasmussen to the New York Yankees as the player to be named later for Tommy John. So this is how Tommy John became an angel. He was the player to be named later. Rasmussen played for the Columbus Clippers, the Class AAA affiliate in 1983, leading the league with 13 wins and 187 strikeouts. The Yankees then in turn traded him to the San Diego Padres on September 12, 1983 for to complete another trade for John the Count Montefusco. He made his major league debut with the Padres on September 16th and made his first start on October 1st of that year. On March 30th, 84, the Padres traded Rasmussen and a player to be named later to the Yankees for Greg Nettles. So if you're following this, he's now been traded between two teams multiple times. 
He began the 84 season with Columbus and was promoted to the major leagues in May, earning his first major league win on May 23rd of that year. Ross Moosen in 1986 competed for the fifth rotation spot for the Yankees. Though originally to start the season in Columbus, he was named the opening day starting rotation after John was plagued by basket spasms. Tommy John, that is. The guy that he was traded for. That's the irony of all this. That turned out to be a good move in 1986 for the team, as he went 18-6 and for the Yankees that season. Talk about a guy that barely was going to make the rotation goes 18-6 and for you. The following year in 1987, uh, he would split time with the Yankees after posting a 9-7 and record. The Yankees would then trade him to the Cincinnati Reds for Bill Gullickson on August 26th. He would spend just a little time with the Reds because in 1988, the following year, the Reds would trade him back to the San Diego Padres. So now we're back with the Padres if you're following, if you're keeping count here. He would then uh, have a spectacular year in 1988 for the Padres, where he would post a 14-4 and record in 20 games for the Padres that year, posting an overall record that year of 16-10. In 1989, he would return to the Padres rotation, posting a 10-10 record. In 1990 and 91, he would remain fixture of the Padres starting rotation. After the conclusion of the 91 season, he would then sign with the Baltimore Orioles. He would not stay long with the Orioles as they would release him in 1992. And he would wind up signing with the Chicago Cubs, appearing in just three games and then the Kansas City Royals to finish out the year in 1992. After the conclusion of the 92 season, uh, he would remain with the Royals. However, he would appear in just nine games in 1993 at the major league level, spending the majority of the season 17 games in AAA for the Royals. After the 93 season, he was granted free agency by the Royals. He would then move back to the West Coast and sign with the San Francisco Giants. However, after being released from the Giants, not cracking their major league roster, he would return to the Kansas City Royals organization. However, they would stick him in AAA where he would finish out the year. But of course, being a strike shortened season, uh, he didn't get to finish out you know, the year in the major leagues. So, despite the strike, the Royals did bring him back in 1995 at 36 years old. He was pitching in the major leagues for the Royals. He spent the majority of the season appearing in 10 games for the Royals' AAA affiliate. However, did appear in five games in the major leagues for the Royals in 1995. So, after the 1995 season, the 36-year-old Ross Moosen was then finished in baseball uh, as a player. Uh, overall in his career, he 91 wins and 77 losses with a 4.15 ERA, appearing in 256 games for various clubs. Uh, the San Diego Padres uh, is where he spent the most of his career, five years total, with the Yankees being a close second with four. And this was not consecutive years. This was being traded back and forth between the Yankees and the Padres from various organizations. Immediately after his playing career, uh, he coached a little bit in the minor leagues in the late 90s from 1996 um, with the Tampa Bay Devil Rays organization as well as the Boston Red Sox. After that time with the Red Sox, he stepped away and he continued to coach in Little League Baseball, according to his Wikipedia page. So, very cool story about Dennis Ross Moosen. Uh, the Padres and the Yankees just couldn't make up their mind of whether they liked the guy or loved the guy or hated the guy. But he put together a spectacular 1986 season for the Yankees. I want to thank him as well as Greg Cataret or Greg Cataray for signing my Yankees cards as well. I also want to thank Sam Militello for signing his cards, including this minor league card that I happen to have the set of. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about some uh, Yankees players from the 80s and early 90s. I look forward to your comments below, and as always, happy collecting. Mm -hmm.